I believe in grace. I believe in favor. Are you ready for the word of God? I have a word from the Lord for you today. Don't rush and go home. Relax. Give me extra 30 to 40 minutes. I'm going to go very fast. I'm going to be blessed. So just relax. Let me talk to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, this is the day the Lord has made. So relax. Now put your hands for the worship team. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now lift up your Bibles as you rise up. Say, this is my Bible. I believe it is the Word of God. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, infallible Word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. God's Word will change my life forever in Jesus' name. Now shout a loud hallelujah. And you may be seated. This is our month of harvest. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm alive today because of grace. Many of you are very much aware of those days when people are dying left and right. I will decide to keep the church open with persecutions and threats of imprisonment and locking the church down. We said we're not going to close this church. And people came with COVID for prayer. Right in my office, sometimes they come here and they thought I was crazy, but thank God it is grace in the midst of all of that that has kept me alive. Even when they came breathing in my mouth, they even thought, this pastor, let's see. We're still here. Not because we are strong, because of his grace. So once you know you have, you have that grace, you can do anything. Anything. So I am a recipient of the grace of God. And when you believe in grace, God's grace begins to work for you. And you begin to grow, grow in grace and not in disgrace. Amen. Somebody shout grace. grace. So we talked about harvest and we said last week there are five super natural harvest that God has made available to you. And when it comes to God, the only way to receive from God is by faith. So grace has made available harvest. Faith obtains what grace has made available. Say with me, it is available. I don't have to look for it. I just receive it by faith. Amen. So last week we talked about the harvest of finances and prosperity. Last week. And if you are really with me, you cannot be in this house and be broke. Never. It's impossible. You cannot really believe on what I'm teaching you and be broke. It's not, it's not possible. God, grace is at work. It's not by labor. It's by favor. Things just begin to happen. Just. Uh, yeah, you are. Where, who said preach? I was thinking about you. My sister. How God, by grace, and by your connection to this grace, how your life was completely transformed. What was
was meant for evil turned to good. Amen. Somebody shout grace. grace. When they thought you cannot make it, not only did you have your business, you became, you became a politician and head office. What are you in the treasurer of the final? What are you in that county? Imagine auditor. And she was campaigning house to house. And she had a deep accent. Not as good as mine. <laughs> but she won. Shot dress. It's not by your look. It's not by education. It is by grace. And she became the auditor. We call her Auditor General. Small girl born in Liberia. Found her way to America by herself as a teenager. Went through ups and downs in life, but yet rose up. Rose up. Rose up. She's an author of books. Rose up. Became auditor in a county that predominantly people that don't look like her. Rose up. Amen. Who told me you cannot be that thin? It's grace. Somebody shout grace. grace. You cannot connect to grace and struggle. So when I say it's a life of no struggle, just take it. Why fighting what you need? I shout, I proclaim to you now, the days of struggles are over. Yeah. Just take it. Others may think, what is this pastor? Is it God? Who, who is he to talk like that? They don't understand. I know whose I am. I know where I am coming from. I say, when I speak it, it happens. I say, who do you think you are? I know. God says, when I speak it, it must happen. I think of her, I just, I just begin to think of you now with, with an issue that she have to, she needed some money to take your situation. I know what God has a way, oh, it's just too much. A way of making those that you owe, pay you what you owe them. Some of you don't understand this. Say, so I believe grace is working for me. Grace. Oh, help me Lord to stay in the subject for today. Somebody shout grace. So we spoke about the harvest of finances, the harvest of prosperity, and today we're going to talk about the harvest of divine health. Amen. Who told you you cannot be healthy? Yeah. Must you be sick? No. You don't have to be sick. No. You can stay healthy. It is not a crime to stay healthy. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with you getting faith that you cannot be sick? It doesn't matter who laughs at you. It doesn't matter who condemns you that you're saying that. Let them talk what they want to say. As far as you know, you cannot be sick. Amen. Why? Because the Bible says, don't allow the people that live in Zion or those that belong to Zion never say they are sick. Amen. Oh, but that other pastor is sick. I am not that other pastor. Oh, that brother was sick. I'm not that brother. But Apostle John, I'm not Apo Apostle John. I am S. A. Duke. And I know what God told me. And I believe God's word. All those other ones, they are also humans like you. Maybe they don't believe, you don't even know. Thank you. But when you believe what God says, and you put it to practice, you keep on living like you are superhuman. Whatever thing that comes to your mind, your hand will produce it. I pray you get to a place that if you can think it, you can have it. So just if you can think it, 
it becomes possible. God just makes it happen. So he spoke on harvest of finances yes, the other day. We're going to talk about the harvest of divine health. There are two things very important in this life. Money and health. Don't let nobody fool you. If you are healthy and wealthy, you got it. If you know how to stay wealthy and you know how to stay healthy, that's all you need in life. Healthy. You are well and you are rich. Here he comes again. Here I come again. That is my message. God sent me to bring it to you. That the days of poverty are over. The days of sickness are over. That is my message. It may not be what you are used to. But this man of sent by God, it was sent to come and let you know you can prosper. You can be healthy. You can be wiser. You can make it. You can advance. You can excel. You can succeed. Rise up and shout yeah. I don't care what anybody says or feels. We keep on preaching this good news. So you can be healthy. And you can walk in divine health. If the devil cannot make you broke, he'll make you sick. If you know how to keep him from making you broke and sick, then that's it. Nothing stops you. You just do more. You just keep moving. Yeah. You get me? You just keep excelling. You just keep succeeding and staying healthy. But I want to share with you some keys today that would help you to harvest divine health. I can only give you what I have. So I know some God showed me some things that when I share it with you, you're going to bless if you apply it in your life. Third John 2. Beloved, above all, I pray that you may prosper in how many things? Healthy. Come on, church, talk to me. How many things? Healthy. That's in your Bible. And be in health even as your soul prospers. So your health and prosperity is a function of your soul. Your soul is your mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. If your mind prospers, then you're going to prosper. Are you going to stay healthy? The Bible said so. And I choose to believe the word of God. The devil cannot make you broke. When he attempt it, you get richer. <laughs> oh, Mahase. When people think your prosperity is in their hand, biggest mistake. Because it's God. When they think you're going to get sick, they just made a mistake. Because God has the ability with his grace to make you stay healthy. Please don't take this message for granted. Because you need health. I don't know if you would like to walk in divine health. You have known me for some of you for over nine years. Those watching for maybe decades. I don't miss church one day. Why? Because I'm healthy. Oh, where is, where is pastor? He's sick. Let's pray for you. We don't do it here. Because I refuse to be sick. Who do you think you are? Are you God? I know what God says. And I apply it. And it tries, but I know what he says. And I follow it to the core. I, I want to stay true to his word. See, a life that is healthy and wealthy is a life of shalom. Peace. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. It's just, things are just working. Say, nothing missing. Nothing broken. Now, before I talk about the harvest of pros, the harvest of, of, of divine health, let's talk about the covenant of divine health. 
A covenant is an agreement, is a promise made by God to you. We see it in 1 Peter 2 verse 24. Who himself bore our sins in his body on a tree that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. That is a covenant of divine health. By the stripes on Christ 2,000 years ago, you were healed. How about if I'm sick? People get sick for two reasons. By how many reasons? How many reasons? You want to know why people get sick? What they eat and what they eat. What they eat and what they eat. <laughs> what you eat and what you eat. That means the physical food you eat and the words that you eat. Words and food. We eat words and you eat natural food. Some of you that are not here watching, you eat food that is killing you. You are committing suicide gradually by what you eat. If you change what you eat, it will change your health. You can listen to junk and expect to be healthy. You cannot eat junk and expect to be healthy. It doesn't matter what you quote. If all you eat is bad for your body, it's going to affect your body. There are some that eat tobacco or that smoke cigarettes. You can smoke and still go to heaven. Are you with me? But you may go a little sooner. Because you are gradually destroying your lungs. You go to heaven, all right. Maybe first class. But then you're going to go sooner with all complications happen in your body because you are eating the wrong kind of food. The food is not just rice and chicken. Anything that goes into your mouth is food. I am, I am healthy by divine, divine grace. And so the promise we just read in the scripture, it is not automatic. You have to put pressure in it to make it work for you. That's why we read Hebrews 6 verse 12. He said, and we do, not, we do not want you to be lazy. Come on, tell somebody, don't be lazy. Hebrews 6 verse 12, NIV. But be, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Through faith and patience, they inherit the promise of God. If anything is lacking in the life of anybody, the, the, the answer exists and is found in one of the benefits of the covenant. And there are seven covenants. If you are lacking financially, it's because you are not understanding the covenant of prosperity. There are seven covenants. I want to just go briefly with you. Take notes on that. Seven covenants. The covenant of salvation. Romans 10 verse 9. Covenant of authority on earth, Luke 10, 17. Covenant of the Holy Spirit, John 14, 23. Covenant of answered prayers, Luke 16, 23. Covenant of faith, Mark 11, 23. Covenant of divine health, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. And the covenant of prosperity, 3, 3 John 2.
If you are lacking anything in your life, the answer is found in one of these covenants. John 10, 10 said, Jesus said, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. But, he said, but I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Somebody shout abundant. Say it again. God wants you healthy. And it's no joke. He wants you really healthy. But the answer is found in the word of God. What to do. The keys to stay healthy. And to walk in this covenant. And to, have the, and to walk in the harvest of divine health. Why that? It's important you stay healthy as you enter 2023. You cannot carry over. Say, I'm not carrying over. Say, I am going over without carrying over. Let me just go straight to the seven, to the keys because of time. Proverbs 4, verse 20 to 27. My son, Give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Don't let them depart out of your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Do you believe God's word? Yeah, he said the answer is right here. Health, health. 24. 23, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. Issues. What issue are you dealing with now? Some of you have some race issues. But, but the Bible says it comes from your heart. Let me ask the one beside you, what's your issue? Yeah, what's your issue? Issue. What issue? Maybe it's job. Maybe it's prosperity, maybe it's health, maybe it's uh, faith, maybe your prayer has not been answered. How can I pray, 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 does it get answered? And the apostle just prays, it just get answered. Why? Is it different? Is it special? No, we are the same. So some things I know you don't know, that's why. And I'm teaching you, you are sleeping. But your mind is the lunch you are going to. Just relax. The food will wait for you. Relax, just chill. Get this word in. Amen? Amen? Verse 24. Put away from you deceitful mouth. And put preserved lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead. And your eyelid look straight be right before you. Ponder the path of your feet. And let your ways be established. Do not turn to the right. Nor to the left. But remove your foot. From evil. In this scripture, you find very quickly seven keys to the harvest of divine health. Simple. I will give you the seven keys in a moment. It says seven keys. And it says in verse 20, my son, give attention, give attention to my word. Incline your ears. I mean, listen to me, son. Listen, listen, listen. Stop being distracted. Listen, listen, listen. And it tells us in chapter 17, 22 of Proverbs, a merry heart does good like medicine. Read that together with me. One, two, three, read. Read it again. Say, so I choose to be happy. I choose to be married. Are well, we healthy? We're already laughing. Joy, joy, joy. Right? Joy, joy, joy. I don't know if you have been to a church, it looks like you are in a real party. That's STBC. We got to be happy and joyful. I don't care what it is, we just be happy. I mean, this is the only place I, this, this is my only party. it. I have no other place to go when I leave here. 
I have no other place to go. This is it. So I'm going to celebrate here. I'm going to be happy here. I'm going to jump and dance here. I'm going to speak in tongues here. If you believe with me, shout a good amen. That's right. So what are the keys? Let's go to key number one. Get this out of the way so we can move on to the next. Give attention to the word of God. Is that easy? Give attention to God's word. It's very self explanation Read it. Study it. Think on it. You must consume God's word until the word consumes you. It's like eating. Is it garlic that makes you smell like garlic? Or ginger? Garlic. I know some of you like garlic. You start, your sweat even smells garlic. You eat God's word so much until it consumes you that you start acting like it. You eat it all the time. Give attention to the word of God. When you come to church, turn off your text messages. Because you're going to do that when you get out of here. Two hours of undivided attention can bring healing to your body. Just two hours of zeroing in on God. Inclining to the word of God. Read it. Study it. Meditate on it. Consume that word. Until that word consumes you. Number two. Align your belief with God's word. If what your mama told you isn't right, discard it. I don't care if it's your mama or papa. If what they told you is not in God's word, get rid of it. If I tell you anything that is not in God's word, don't believe it. If I don't show you in the Bible, discard it. That's why we are a Bible-believing church. Whatever message we speak in this house is Bible-based. We're not speaking out of a dream or out of a feeling. No, it's God's word. I don't come and say to you, oh, last night I was having a dream and I saw an aircraft and I saw the Air Force. You're going to get a plane. We don't do that thing here. No, we go with God's word. God's word is a more sure word of prophecy. Amen? If it's not like with God's word, keep it to yourself. Because God's word is a key. So align your belief with the word of God. It doesn't matter what you learn from the old place it used to be. Now change your mind and let it be God's word. If it's not God's word, don't take it. Don't eat it. It can kill you. If believe it or in the word of God. Align your belief with God's word. Align your belief with the word of God. It tells you in verse 20, my son, give attention to my word. I'll incline your ears to my word. Incline your ears. Change your belief to learn about the word of God. We are who we are, where we are, based on who you choose to believe. Everybody believes somebody. Don't fool yourself. Maybe you are believing CNN. Maybe you are believing in Fox News. Maybe you are believing in some Facebook person. Maybe you, believe, you believe in somebody. So you got to choose who would I believe? Will I believe Apostle S. A. Duke or will I believe that man on the street that has a drugstore? Who will I believe? Because we all believe somebody. Everybody. So don't say no. I don't, you believe somebody. You believe. Maybe you believe the news. Think of during the time of COVID. People just believe the news. If you lose your smell, you got COVID. <laughs> I don't even smell my shirt. Maybe I got COVID. Hey, doctor, I don't smell. Maybe I got COVID. Let's, let's check you out. Oh, yeah, you got COVID. Oh, I said it. Now that there's no COVID, is, is there still COVID? Maybe there's no COVID. Now there's no COVID, how come you don't care about your, your, your smell anymore? Because nobody is talking about smell. Are you still with me? That's why you must hear the right thing. You must hear the word of God. Because what you hear affects your belief system. 
Say, I believe I'm blessed. I walk in divine health. In the name of Jesus. Because you live in life. Your, the way you live is based on what you believe. So your life revolves around your belief. Like, I believe I cannot fail. I just believe it. You see, my son said to me, I believe I cannot fail. It doesn't matter. All that can fail for me, I'm not failing. It doesn't matter. If you are dragging me to the pit, I can still believe I cannot fail. Why do I believe that? Want to know why? Because I'm created in the image of God. And I carry the DNA of God on the inside of me. And the last time I checked it, I discovered that God cannot fail. And if God cannot fail, me too, I cannot fail. Come and rise up and shout hallelujah. It's my belief. You may not like it, but it's my belief that lines up with the word of God. That's why I'm the way I am. Because I believe God's word the way I believe it. So I cannot be broken life. Do you believe it? Do you know you can believe it so much that people from nowhere start dropping money on your feet? Do you really believe it? Or you believe nobody can tell you a no? So everywhere you go, you say yes. If they tell you a no, but ask them, you ask them, are you sure it's a no? Because no is not my vocabulary. For me, it's always yes. Somebody shout yes. And then shout yes. Rise up and shout yes, yes, yes. And then rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. And shout yes, yes, yes. Visualize, visualize yourself healthy. What you see is what you get. See yourself healthy. Visualize, visualize. It means you have a vision of yourself healthy based on the word of God. That means in your mind you're healthy. Look at your lungs healthy. See your kidney in the right order. See your eyes healthy. See your bones healthy. Visualize yourself healthy. Just keep the vision of the word of God as, part, as, as it pertains to you. Get a vision of yourself based on the word of God. Somebody say good amen. I'll give you a testimony. Many years ago when I was out here in the field practicing, I had a patient who have a heart problem and the heart was blocked and I said to him, well, listen I'm going to tell you what to do to keep your heart to be right he said what? so I went and printed out a picture of a good heart and I said put this heart on top of your refrigerator and look at it every day imagine your heart to be like that that everything is okay everything is straight that you don't need a pacemaker anymore just begin to visualize it wake up in the morning begin to say my heart looks just like that discard the picture that was given to you by the doctor and look at the picture you put on your refrigerator it sounds crazy but it works because what you see is who you become as you begin to do that by the time I saw this lady again, she went back to the doctor and she was told, you do not need a pacemaker anymore. Come on, somebody, shout hallelujah. She just put to practice and it's so easy. Vision. So visualize yourself healthy. Don't see yourself sick. Don't see yourself sick. Don't see yourself dying. Don't see yourself crashing in an aircraft. Don't see yourself dying for a car accident. Don't see yourself getting sick of the flu. Don't see yourself dying, getting sick of whatever it is. See yourself healthy. Say, I'm healthy. Say it again. Say it one more time. How 
about if I see myself that way and I get sick, don't take the sick man. Don't sign for the, for the luggage. Say, return back to sender. Don't sign for the package. Return it. Say, but that is not being real. That's why we are teaching you how to make it real. You can make anything real if you choose to believe what you see. I believe what God's word says. Have you met people that believe a lie? They lie so much to themselves, they think the lie is truth. And you are wondering what's wrong with them. They really believe the lie to be true. And after a while, they, they walk in and live in a lie because they believe it, they see themselves in a certain way that is not true. And they believe it, and that becomes their reality. What you see becomes your reality. So I see myself healthy. I see myself well. I see myself wealthy. Some of you use a stronger voice for the wealthy. Some of you like wealth more than health. Health is health is very important. Wealth is good, but health, man. You can have all the money and you are sick is nonsense. But if you have money, because you are not sick, man, you, you are living. Your life has just begun. And that is your portion in Jesus' name. See yourself already healed. See yourself as walking divine health. See yourself as healthy, not as sick. Visualize yourself. Check your knees, that your knees are strong. Visualize your brain, that your brain is healthy. No more mental issues. You are healthy. No more sickness in your brain. You are healthy. So I am healthy. Number four. Guard your heart. Verse 21. Don't let the part of out of your heart. Keep them in your heart. Guard your heart with the word of God. Bible says the enemy comes right away and steal what has been put in your heart. Guard it. Guard your heart. I say, guard your heart. Say, I will guard my heart. In the name of Jesus. See, your heart, your heart. What comes into your heart? You have the eye gate. And you have the ear gate. How do you guard your heart? What you see and what you hear. Don't hear everything and don't look at everything. These are just simple keys. It's not everything you must want to listen to. And it's not everything you want to see. Oh my. I pray you get this. Some of us, if they are shouting, trouble, trouble. There's trouble there. There's trouble there. People are trouble there. Some of us just go the other direction. But some, they go in there. What is the trouble there? A stray bull that just comes up. <laughs> who, who sent you there? Must you see everything happening? What do you, what you allow to come through your eyes? Some of you watch too much wrong TV. You watch too much CNN. Continuous negative news. And then you get yourself in trouble. You believe what you hear. That is, that is not what God's word says. But you need to guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Don't be afraid. No fear of sickness. No fear of disease coming upon you. A thousand may fall at your right. Is that what it says? And ten thousand, and, and it will never come near you. With your eyes shall ye behold the reward of the wicked. Number five, we have two more to go. Are you happy? We're gonna be done in less than in less than the time you think we're gonna be done. You have to be careful. 
Number five is right confession. Stop saying things that are not true. Stop lying. When you lie, you confuse your spirit man. Stop saying things contrary to the word of God. It confuses your soul. Say what's right. Keep to what is right. Maintain what is right. So when you begin to speak God's word, it manifests easily. I was sharing yesterday at the home church. And by the way, if you don't belong to a home church, look for one. Join one. The addresses are right on the, uh, I believe on Facebook page or website. Join one. Go to one. So I was sharing yesterday. Our home church is always, home church is growing and growing. It's amazing how, how we have gotten to almost maybe 30 people in home church. Yeah, so it's actually growing. It's like, it's like a little church in the home. But that's where it's meant to be. Yours should be growing too. Amen. I said, amen. amen. Right confession, right confession. Speak the right word. Don't confuse your soul. Don't confuse your spirit. Because what you say is what you get. Watch your confession. You possess your confession. Stop saying, I think I'm dying. That is not the Bible. Stop saying, oh, I think this thing is going to kill me. Stop saying, man, that diagnosis, I knew I was going to get it. That is not God's word. Confess right. It doesn't matter the diagnosis. Don't accept it and don't say it. And don't call anybody you know. Can you believe this? I was just diagnosed with a cancer of the toenail. Cut it off. And the person calls the other friend. Do you believe that? That uh, Sister Angela diagnosed with cancer of the toenail. The Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. Once somebody has said what you just said, it sticks. If you don't like what you see, don't say it. Do you, do you understand this? Amen. Only say what you want. Don't call a big cat that little cat. Don't say, man, it's raining so hard when it's shining. You're confusing your soul. Don't say things that are contrary to the word of God. Maintain right confession. Number six. Are you getting something? See yourself as the word of God sees you. Have the right vision of yourself. Let your eyes look ahead and your eyelid look right before you. How God sees you. That's how you see yourself. I know who I am. Say, I know who I am. Say, I am royalty. I am royalty. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am highly favored. I am so prosperous. I am heavily anointed. I am too graced to be disgraced. I am loved by many. I am a child of God. I am God's favorite. He has my picture in his wallet. In the name of Jesus, he loves me. He loves me with an everlasting love. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. So you have the right vision of yourself. You see yourself the way God's word sees you. And keep that vision of yourself steady. Not how your neighbor sees you, but how God sees you. I, you know, I have a word for that sister. That is right there. I don't know her name, but I've been seeing her. The one behind Tisha, Tisha, that lady, yes. Stand up. I have something for you. Come up, come up here. You speak English? What else do you speak? Only English. That's nice. I speak more than English. 
I speak a language called Urubo. You know what that is? I speak Igbo. You know what that is? You don't know. Yeah, I speak other language. I, I used to speak French too, but French disappeared. One day I was praying in tongues, I was speaking Chinese. It sounded like Sister Chen talking. Chen Chen Cho Cha Cho Ma Che Che Che. Say, my, my, my. Say, the Lord wants to do something great in your life. You've been coming here, is that right? For how long? Four, four years. Wow. So you just come and sit over there. Just quiet. And after church, you just take off. You don't talk to nobody. I'm going to talk to you today. God wants to use you. Yes, he wants to change things about your life. You know, he wants to anoint you even right now. Whatever that is, that is in your life, that is not of God, it's about to take off. It's about to go. It's about to go. There are some areas of your life that is sick. The healing is coming. And right now, lift up your hands to heaven. You're about to receive healing in your relationship. You have been lonely for too long. God says you've been staying by yourself lonely. In the midst of people, you are lonely. The enemy wants you to stay by yourself so he can begin to molest your mind. You've been struggling. You come to church, you get happy, you get back, you begin to feel sad. But God says, you tell me that that season is over. Things are about to take over. Things are about to change. Things are about to change right now, right now. That by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, that thing that stresses your mind is about to be history. Your days of being what he has called you to be has come. Your days of loneliness is gone. Your days of being around people and seeing lonely is gone. Every sickness in your body is about to disappear. Right now, Lord, touch her. By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. Take it in. Take it in. Take it in. The power of God is moving upon you right now. For the count of five, receive it. One, two, three, four, five. Take it. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. New beginning for you. What is your name? Lauren. New beginning for you. Come up here, Lauren. Come up here, Lauren. Come up here, Lauren. Follow me, Lauren. Follow me, Lauren. Follow me. Come on, come on, come up here. You have just been promoted. You have come from a place of mediocrity to a place of prominence. A place where you were called to be nobody to a place where you become somebody. As you stood on this altar, the God of heaven, the God who called me, is about to change your story in a hurry. That in the next 21 days, counting from today, you have a testimony. Mark it, beginning from today, keep counting down. In 21 days, in 21 days, do you believe what I'm telling you? There's a lady we met in Kenya. It's a family or I think sister, sister Lucy. I gave her the same word. And she sent me a message the other day. He said, Apostle, things have changed. Just like you said they were going to be. Things just turned around in my life. And I said, keep giving God the glory. And as you stand before me on this altar, the God who have called me, Lapuse, Rabu, Shekabale, whatever has been the obstacle in your life, I decree it now to be completely gone in the name of Jesus. Ooh. You are giving a birth to a baby. Not meaning natural baby, 
but something is going to come out. You're going to give a birth to something you've been expecting. It's about to happen. In the next 21 days, something will take place in the realm of the Spirit that will bring this word to completion even right now in the name of Jesus. Do you receive it? Do you connect with it? Do you receive it? Do you connect with it? For it shall be unto you according to your faith in the name of Jesus. And if you believe, shout hallelujah. Rise up and shout hallelujah. You know, go back to your seat. Come on, clap your hands to Jesus. One more that we close. Divine health. Be steadfast in faith. Be steadfast in faith. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Stay focused on God's word. Stay, stand in faith. Be steadfast in faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Don't give in to the devil's suggestion. You're going to stay healthy. You're going to stay well. In the name of Jesus. Let us rise. Let us rise. In this house, sickness is not a part of our story. If you are sick in your body, I want to pray for you. If you are sick in your body, just run to the altar quickly. I want to just make a pronouncement. Just come. If you are sick, just come. Quickly, I give you two minutes. Wherever you are, you have to run because I want to pray in the next two minutes. And when you come, lift up your hands to heaven, close your eyes, and expect. That's all. Come, lift up your hands, close your eyes, and expect. You come, hands lifted, close your eyes, and expect. I decree in the name of Jesus. Anyone sick in this place, or your word says sickness does not belong to us. I command that this day of harvest of divine health, let health return to your people. In the name of Jesus, that way they have been diagnosed, let diagnosis change. Where they have been diagnosed, let diagnosis change. I say let diagnosis change. Let diagnosis change. Let healing flow. Let healing flow. Let diagnosis change. Ooh. Let healing flow. Let healing flow. Let healing flow. Let healing flow. Let it flow to your body. Let it flow to your nerves. Let it flow to your kidney. Let it flow to your liver. Flow. Shakabalaya. Let healing flow. Let healing flow. Let healing flow. Let it flow, 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 heal it flow, heal it flow, heal it flow, heal it flow, let heal it flow, let heal it flow, let heal it flow, let 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 it anointing, let it anointing. Bring it out. Let the anointing bring it out from Elamus being whatever is in you that is not of God. Go! 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 Hell it flow. Shake up. Hell it flow. Hell it flow. The hell it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow to your hands. Let it flow to your body. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, oh shaka barabaya, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, bring it up here, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Flow, flow, flow. 
flow. Let it flow. Let it flow.
just beginning. Flow, flow, flow. Receive the flow. Receive the flow. Receive the flow. Receive the flow. 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 Hallelujah, people of God. Hallelujah. Come on, shout flow, 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 flow. Come on, say flow, flow. Flow. Say flow, say flow. Say flow. Say flow, 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 flow. You want the flow? Come here. Flow. 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 shall be greater than your former latter days 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 latter days anointing latter rain latter days greater than the former take it now spent or this is God doing something in the life of his people let us all rise as we close let us all rise everybody just we're about to close just relax wait tell the next one relax just wait we're about to leave just re relax relax just rise up don't miss out sometimes God keeps the best for the last don't miss it don't be distracted. Just stay in. Stay. Just stay. Stay. We are, we are, we are about to round up. Stretch your hands towards me. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. 
just a little. Hold on, hold on. Woo. This is your best day ever. Every hereditary disease, I command it to be reversed right now. In the name of Jesus, I decree that the God of heaven will prosper you financially, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, in the name of Jesus, you'll be a wonder to your generation. They will call you blessed. They will call you favored. In the name of Jesus. And those that believe, let your amen be the loudest. We're about to receive your breakthrough offering. Some of you is a seed, some of you is a tithe. I'll do that very quickly. Whatever it is, God will do something about what you're about to release from your hand. It's not going to leave your life, nor go to your future. You're going to see how things will turn around. You will know that God is real and it's by the Spirit, it's not by power, it's not by might. So bring out your best offering and your tithe. Don't play game with God. Your tithe is your 10%. Bring it to give to the house of God. So your house might be full. So you can experience divine, supernatural breakthrough of harvest in every direction. Harvest in every aspect of your life. Prosperity, financial harvest becomes your portion. So your, your tithe is 10%. I'll say it again for those who don't know what it means. That means 10% of what you got in your paycheck belongs to God. It's a way of putting God first and honoring God. Remember, it is not by compulsion. It's not by force. If you don't want to do it, it's up to you. But we choose to do so we can experience blessing under the order of Mechizedek. Lift up your offering, lift up your seed, lift up your tithe. If you give it online, the instructions are right on the screen. Very easily arranged for you. Don't give it online. Ha, ha, ha. Say, I decree, Lord, money will not be scarce for your people. We break every stronghold of financial embarrassment. In the name of Jesus, I decree that right now, as they are giving, Lord, let there be supernatural harvest of finances that would blind the eyes of the devil. As we bless them upon your giving this morning, I decree blessed in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, the devil can no more touch your money. In the name of Jesus, your money will stay secured. As he has done for me, he will do that for you. Even bigger and better, you have a testimony. In the name of Jesus, and those that believe, let your amen sound like you are saying an amen. The ushers will guide, make your way towards the wall, towards it just coming as the ushers guide to give your offering. We will close shortly after that. Let's do that. I will bless you, Lord, for your grace on my life. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. Hallelujah. Who is a winner man in this house? I will bless you, Lord, for your grace on my life. You have blessed me, oh Father. I dance like a winner man. Come on. Let's put our hands for Jesus. I will bless you, 
you, oh God, for the grace of my life. I am blessed, oh Lord, now I dance like a wiener man. Oh, a wiener man. Oh, a wiener man.
Amen. He's waiting, right? <laughs> All right, I don't know how to end this now. Uh, who knows how to stop the service? Pastor Ron? Okay, come and stop it. Because I, otherwise, I will continue. Just uh, close us in prayer and ask us to come back on Wednesday. to winning. I think winning is my right. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, oh God, for this awesome service. We thank you for our man of God as we celebrate his birthday today. Father, I pray, oh God, that celebration would be his portion for the rest of his life. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for all that our eyes have seen today and our ears have heard. We pray, O oh God, as we leave from your house, we are not leaving from your presence in the name of Jesus. Go with us, lead us, keep us, guide us. Let your ministering angels protect us and cover us in the name of Jesus. And all that stand with me and believe said, Amen. Amen. Let us do our declaration. We are the righteousness of God, royalty, victorious, and overcomers, and have been destined to win. And there is nothing the devil can do about it. Crowned with favor, walking in divine health and prosperity and carriers of the presence of God. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. We will see you on Wednesday, when 7 p.m. Says, for Bible study. God bless Nobody can say no. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no.